I have a question also for Richard Garriott. Could you uh, talk a little bit about whether this uh, experience for you has met your expectations, and uh, have you given any thought to maybe doing this again sometime and what you might like to do if you flew a second time? Thanks. Uh, yeah, I would definitely say that uh, this has met and in many ways exceeded my expectations. And in fact, uh, uh, you know, while of course I've, I've grown up uh, near NASA and kind of in a space family, so to speak, uh, so I, I understood what to expect, I think a little better than most uh, civilians, you might say. Uh, but uh, still, I've been uh, very impressed uh, with uh, uh, all the technology and all the work that's gone on to make this occur and all the uh, attributes of space and uh, the capabilities here on station. Uh, there's there's no question that I've already begun to think about uh, the next trip up. Uh, with this trip, I was trying to study and analyze how uh, private citizens might be able to contribute to uh, you know, the uh, uh, success here in space, and I'll have a lot more thoughts for that when I come back down. Thanks. Hi, this is Robert Perlman with CollectSpace.com uh, with another question for Richard. Um, of some of your activities on board, how have you found uh, your zero-G artwork to be going, and have you had a chance to run the lockers? Uh, well, I've, uh, I did create the Zero-G artwork. I came up with a glove box in which I could uh, uh, release some uh, paint without uh, risking uh, painting the walls of the station and uh, uh, created some art that I'll be bringing back so you can judge for yourself. Uh, and no, I haven't uh, yet found a, a good time or a space to uh, try the uh, locker run, but uh, uh, you know, we'll see what I can uh, figure out here before I come to the ground. It's nice to talk to you, by the way, Rob. This is Marcia Dunn of the Associated Press uh, with a couple questions for Richard Garriott, please. I I'm wondering what parts of your mission have been most worth your $30 million, the most fun or exciting parts of the whole ride so far? Well, the, uh, uh, you know, I would say uh, uh, the protein crystal growth experiment that uh, we won't really know how it went until I get back down to the ground is uh, uh, the part that I'm looking at from what you might call an investment standpoint. But from a uh, personal uh, joy standpoint, you know, the whole journey, frankly, even before launch, the opportunity to, to train, uh, train for and work with uh, these amazing astronauts and uh, all the very capable uh, people on the ground that, that, uh, that pull off this amazing orchestra that it takes to keep uh, all of this up in space, uh, that was really fulfilling even before launch day. So I, I told people before I launched that I already felt fulfilled for uh, you know kind of what I contracted for, so to speak. Of course, it's been great icing on the cake to actually take the rocket ride, uh, which was uh, very exciting. And of course, uh, the view from up here is spectacular. Uh, and uh, so I've really enjoyed uh, you know all of my uh, time here so far uh, in uh, both the serious science and the educational work, uh, as well as uh, uh, you know things like. Uh, the Earth Observation Photography, which is always a joy. Thank you. And one more question, please. How many times have you had the chance to talk to your father from space, and has that been especially gratifying for you? Uh, yes, that has been especially gratifying, and uh, by the way, I've spoken with him uh, pretty much every day, in fact, uh, multiple times per day, usually. Uh, I was speaking with him every day uh, from launch up until, uh, I guess, uh, this morning, and now he's headed out to Kazakhstan to the landing site, so I won't speak to him again until landing, uh, but, uh, you know, that's been a, a real joy, uh, not just talking to him here from space, but this whole year we've actually spent uh, working together for this flight, uh, and it's been a great opportunity for us to, uh, uh, you know, bond so to speak, as adults uh, in ways that uh, we haven't had a chance to do, to do for in many years. Richard, you obviously had an, uh, a fun ride up on the Soyuz. Tell me about your thoughts coming down on the Soyuz and, and what you understand from your Russian colleagues about uh, how all that went and, and your general confidence level. Thanks. Uh, yes, uh, you know, I also express the same confidence uh, both on the way up and on the way down. Uh, you know, of, of course, uh, I've paid close attention to the last uh, two ballistic reentries and uh, watched all the reports and analysis as to what was uh, the cause or the potential causes and what was done to repair it. But uh, uh, I have no concerns uh, about reentry. And, uh, uh, you know, even even if there was a ballistic reentry, that's uh, still a normal mode of reentry, really. And so uh, uh, I'm uh, excited excited about the trip home uh, regardless. What have you been told about what you might experience on the way back downhill if in fact you end up in a uh, ballistic reentry, either by your crewmates or trainers? 
Well, uh, you know, through the simulations we do in training, uh, you know, we simulate uh, every nominal and every off-nominal, uh, you know, uh, situation that is uh, uh, theorized or has it happened before. And uh, plus, uh, as part of my medical uh, workup, uh, I've even uh, simulated uh, ballistic reentries in the centrifuge uh, a good number of times at this point. So uh, I think that uh, even if we were to have a ballistic reentry, it uh, is something that, uh, uh, of course, I'll tolerate. Right well, but I also don't think it would alarm me in any way. Uh, and uh, but uh, but I, again, I have every confidence that uh, uh, the things that have been done uh, have very good odds of uh, rectifying that probability in the first place. Uh, thanks. Just a quick follow, if I could. Could you tell us what your uh, sensations were when you were uh, simulating a ballistic reentry in the uh, centrifuge? Thanks. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's uh, funny when you uh, sit in a centrifuge and uh, spin it up to, you know, three or four Gs, uh, you know, two and a half to three and a half Gs is about what you get on a roller coaster. So, uh, uh, you know, that doesn't feel uh, particularly uh, unusual. Um, once you go past about four or five and get up to about six Gs, uh, that becomes uh, the point where uh, it's interesting. Uh, the first time I did it, uh, I intended to just uh, lift my hand up and put it in front of me just to see at, uh, at how many Gs I could, uh, I could continue to you know, reach out to an instrument panel, for example. And uh, once we get up to uh, seven or eight Gs, uh, your chest becomes, your, 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 the front of your chest becomes so heavy uh, that that, be, that really takes your attention. And I, I quit lifting my hand, not because I couldn't, but because I neglected to think about it anymore. Instead, I was thinking about breathing. Uh, but even all the way up to about nine Gs, you can actually breathe fine as long as you, uh, you know, breathe through your diaphragm, so to speak, and uh, uh, you breathe a little bit more shallow than you would otherwise. Uh, but now that I've done it two or three times and know what to expect, um, again, uh, it wouldn't alarm me. Uh, it would uh, just uh, be, an, and as you probably know, uh, ballistic reentries were, you know, the normal mode of reentry for everything from Apollo and uh, a lot of the early Soyuz. So uh, it's nothing that uh, others haven't uh, experienced many times before. Station, this is KSCPAO. That's the final question here from Florida. We're now going to toss you briefly back to Houston for a few additional questions.